Welcome into the door of psychic experience. Ask and you will be given what you ask for. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. For everyone who asks receives. Anyone who seeks finds. If only you will knock, the door will open. And the truth within your higher spiritual self will be revealed to you. Come now with us and go where angels come and you can too. Welcome to Psychic Experience. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Reverend Doris Horvath. This is a metaphysical, spiritual talk show, and we have various different topics and various different people on our show once a month. And the show is being presented by the First Spiritualist Church in the City Heights area of San Diego, where the church where angels come and so can you any Sunday we have our angel spirits. I am the pastor, Reverend Doris. My assistant pastor is Reverend Marcella Jones. She's a UN practitioner. And we have our new Reverend, Reverend Celine Clark, who does a Tuesday circles. And we also have Reverend Susan Moore, who's been in our church for a long, long while. She's at presently our vice president. And Reverend Billy Baker has gone into retirement. Everyone send her blessings. And we also have still Reverend Pete Monroe. He's our Minister of Healing. And Reverend Fran Monroe, they live in Harmony Grove now, but they're still active of the First Spiritualist Church. Again, this is church where angels come, and so can you, any Sunday. And we have very special guests on the show this time. We have a man who years ago was actually the pastor of the First Spiritist Church, Reverend James Smith. And tonight he's going to be talking about a subject that I find very interesting. So I'm going to introduce Reverend James Smith now so that you can learn from him something that's so interesting that everyone can benefit by. Reverend James, would you like to say hello to our TV audience? Hello. <laughs> How's everybody this evening? Glad to be here this evening. I'm so happy you can. And I know that you've gone to retirement <laughs> or else maybe you wouldn't be here. <laughs> that you're talking about going back out there again. Ever since I've known you, you've been involved in hypnosis. And you've done very, very well with your practice. But there are people still that need to know about what is hypnosis. So they need you to tell them. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> Hypnosis is really simple. Um, it's all it is really a shift of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And it's a shift of consciousness from your external awareness, um, in other words, your everyday world out here, and making a shift to your internal awareness inside. And that is where most of your behavior systems are located. That mm -hmm. is, once you learn something, then it's stored internally in the subconscious mind. Is so, it true that there's 88% of that's where our real power is? That's, I, I believe that. That is probably where the majority of our real power is. Mm -hmm. Because once we tap into that, we're not really um, at the mercy of everything else around us all the time. Because right. we're using that inner power to guide us in the direction that we need to be. Well, I think that's something that everyone should really learn how to access. Well, how, how is it experienced with your knowledge? How is that experienced? I think that, that there's a couple of different ways that we can look at the experience of hypnosis. Mm -hmm. Number one, we want to look at the way that maybe we're teaching ourselves. So when, when we are taking the time to teach ourselves to do things, are we being taught in the right manner? Okay, and that's one of the th one well, of the key our, things that we have to look at. Our parents taught us, uh, uh, and that's <laughs> and that's one of the big items. Is, <laughs> right. is how were we taught? <laughs> when right. we were just yay high. <laughs> but um, that's one part because we are w between the ages of zero and eight. We're actually this little subconscious mind running around the house, collecting data and information all the mm -hmm. time. So that's really where our personality and our makeup comes from. But when we talk about experiencing hypnosis and maybe what it feels like, I liken it unto when you go to bed at night, you might get in bed, you're, 
you punch the pillow up a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. and then you find that super relaxed and comfortable position to be in. It's like, this is it. I don't want to move anymore, <laughs> you know. I wish I could have done that last night. <laughs> <laughs> and in the process of being in that position, you know that you're just starting to fall off to sleep and you're aware, you're still aware that you're starting to drift off to uh, sleep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. you may even hear the, the neighbor's dog bark next door, uh -huh. across the street, or a truck drive by. But you know what it is, it doesn't really matter. And it's just that twilight right there before you would fall off into sleep uh -huh. that you're really in this hyper-aware state. And that's that hip, hip, no, I, I call it a hypnotic state. It's a twilight uh -huh. just before you drop uh -huh. off into sleep. And that's really where we're working with hypnosis. That's one of the experiences. So even though you're aware of what's going on, uh -huh. and that's a fallacy, a lot of people think they go unconscious, they don't know what happens. Okay. <laughs> That's what they're afraid That's of. That's what they're afraid of. They might say something. <laughs> and especially when they hear the word hypnosis. Um, but that is, that is that twilight space right there. That is actually the hypnotic state. And that's where your subconscious mind is coming to the surface to take over what we call the autonomic system of the body. Mm -hmm. So that when you go off to sleep, you're breathing, your, your body's functioning the way it needs to be, your digestive right. system is working. Well, imagine how automatic all that is, and then any behaviors that you put into that system on a daily basis, that's how you're going to act out in your life at the same time. Right. So that's when you have a behavior system that's not working for you anymore, then we want to access that behavior system there, and then we can make the changes that you want to make, uh -huh. see, that you want to make, not me being the hypnotist, you right. see what I'm saying, but the, hip, the, the changes that you want to make. And then once we do that, you start integrating those and those become the new behavior systems and they override the old. The old just steps aside and moves away. Uh, so you're reprogramming <clears throat> your subconscious. Yes, and, and, yeah. and I want to make sure that people understand the vocabulary of reprogramming. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. a lot of people yeah, think he's going to program me to do this or <laughs> he's going to program me yeah. to do that. And that's not really the case. I, t I get information from you. If I was working with you, I would get information from you. You would tell me what you wanted, and that would be the direction that we would move uh, into. It would be my choice. Exactly. Okay. Well, and, and using it for healing, um, what uh, might you do with that in, that in that way? What would be used? At well, let's, let's again, let's go in this direction. When we start looking at using hypnosis for healing, and, and what we're actually doing with that, Doris, is, uh, I should say Reverend Doris, oh, is that we, right. are, we, are, um, we are actually working with that autonomic system again. Uh -huh. Because that autonomic system is where we learn that our body works to heal the body. We have all the chemical makeup within when the body asks for something. It is that part of our autonomic system that goes to work to make those changes. So... Once that we can access that system again, uh -huh. maybe we can kick some of that into gear uh -huh. and help people start making some, some changes with their body to bring about the healing process again. So that's one of the ways that we would use hypnosis to aid in the, in the healing process. Okay. Say. Well, how does hypnosis work to be able to, to help, um, really start helping with a healing process? Okay. Um, let's take a, let's take an example if I okay. can. Okay. I had a gentleman who was an Olympic athlete. Uh huh. And I got a phone call one day from the hospital. His a friend of his called me, and he had broke his neck. Oh In dear. Breaking his neck, he basically they had written him off. That was it. That I was the end of his so. career. Everything he was to be in a wheelchair as a quadriplegic for the rest of his life. Oh dear. Well, because of his status as such an athlete, they, one of the best surgeons, and actually that surgeon happened to be here in San Diego, they started doing some, they did some work, they did the surgery, and they got him started again. But it was to the point to where when he was thinking about doing the coordination that wasn't there, his ability to make those the nerves tell the body what to do and make that function work as good as it needed to uh -huh. wasn't all there. And the, uh -huh. the one hand was pretty curled up and 
um, pulled in this way oh, due to dear. the injury. So knowing that the brain has redundant features, and I'm going to say redundant pathways, I'll, I'll say it that way. Okay. What, we, what I actually did is once we hypnotized him, then I went to that central nervous system, which is part of the autonomic system, and we started mapping new ways to get the thought processes down into the hands oh, and down into the right. feet. Mm -hmm. Okay. But what we did was we tapped that inner resource on the inside and that helped him start mapping. Well, I used colors and we uh -huh. used vocabulary that helped do, do mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And that way he was able to start working again and get back on his feet again. And actually within eight months he was back into training again for the next Olympic Olympics. That is really amazing. So it was, it was quite surprising at that point in time. Wow. I bet he was certainly happy. Oh, he was. He was. He thought his life was all over, and then he was saved. And, and I have to admit that one of the things that did come up was the fact that in, in the process of our work, I have to admit his Olympic status as far as the way he thought, his workout regimen, you know, because they have their routines. They work very, very hard at what they do. Um, there's no giving up. Oh, you yes. see what I'm saying? They have to diligently work on it all the and time. And that's exactly what he did. He diligently worked on what we did all the time. Ah, oh, that's amazing. So. That is really wonderful. Well, maybe we wait till the end of the show to see if you've got some more stories. Okay. What other types of things can hypnosis be used for? Well, hypnosis can be used for a, a, a myriad of different, we can say, issues. Uh -huh. well, some people might want to call them problems, okay? Right. But basically, it, we want to look at what is it that's going on in your life that you may want to change, or a behavior system that you have that you want to change. Okay. And that's, and, and the really, that's unlimited. But when you look at hypnosis today and what the major factors are today, we want to talk about weight loss, okay, and curving those behavior patterns mm -hmm. that may get out of control. Um, we want to talk about stopping smoking or what we call smoking cessation. Right. Those kinds of things like that. Mm -hmm. um, I worked, I've worked with a lot of children for their school testing and memory, oh. concentration, speed uh -huh. reading. Um, things like that. So they don't have fear of taking a they test? They don't have the fear of taking the <laughs> test, you know. It's that the mind goes blank when, yeah. <laughs> you know, the paper goes down. So we take that, we, we teach them how to take that anxiety away uh -huh. and actually start to understand that what they do read, they do retain and that they're able to tap back into that information and bring it back out, just write it on the, write it on the paper. And I actually, I actually train them that what they're, when they go back to what I call the file cabinet, Mm -hmm. That they can, that that file cabinet will open up and the information will flow straight out of the mind and down the arm and right into the writing hand so they can oh, fill in the test. That's a wonderful process. So it allows them to sit there and become very relaxed and know that they have the information. If a child knows they have the information, then it's very easy for them to. And to they're work able in the to process. sleep the night before knowing they were going to be exactly. able to do it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, okay. So, you know, those are some of the very typical situation fears, phobias. Um, maybe later on I can tell you about a lady that we had the fear of driving. Fear um, of driving? Fear of driving. Oh, my. Um, working with those types of situations. Fear of flying. Oh, the yes. Fear of flying is a very, a very interesting one. Uh, there, cause there's a, there has been in, in the majority of the therapeutic work, the hypnosis work I've done for fear of flying, there's always been one common denominator underneath What's it. that, a dream state? Where fear they of dying. Oh, it's a fear of dying. It's a fear of dying. Oh, it's they connected don't, with that. They don't, have con they don't have control of the airplane. Well, yeah. And, right. and there is a fear of dying. And it's, oh. it's, I found it to be very interesting. It kept coming up in the work that I was doing with people who were coming in with this fear of flying. Oh. And the underlying cause was the fear of death. And somehow they had linked flying with somebody that has, was usually very close to them that had died recently. Oh. And, and that, that sense of loss of control, it's like they couldn't stop that death. Oh. 
and when they get in the airplane next, they couldn't, they're not in control of the airplane, what's going to happen? Well, they probably were in spiritual state there. They didn't know if they were going to get reincarnated. <laughs> that could be. That could be. <laughs> well, one of that phobias, <clears throat> I know myself, <clears throat> excuse me, I was always afraid of spiders. <laughs> <laughs> I think the terminology, <laughs> arachnophobia. <laughs> um, you know, that's, that's interesting because that can come in so many different ways. Maybe as a child, somebody scared you with a my spider. S my sister did it. Yeah, well, okay, see. <laughs> or, or maybe somewhere along the way, you just, you just really found that that was a really creepy animal that would crawl across oh, the floor. Are, especially tarantulas. And, and see, and that just oh, really bothered you. <laughs> and, and actually, it's a, it's a rather simple type of uh, phobia to get over with. Uh, it's really simple. Um, doesn't take too much. I've been buying plastic spiders and I put them all over my desk. Okay. <laughs> so I have to look at them. Kind of condition yourself <laughs> yeah, condition that they're okay. Myself. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had a, uh, in one class, we had a lady who was afraid of water. Afraid of water? Yeah. And she wouldn't get in a swimming pool, wouldn't get in the water, wouldn't go in the water at the beach. And here oh. we are in San Diego. Oh, she took a bath. Well, I'll tell you what was, <laughs> you know what it was? What was it? When she was real tiny, she was about three years old, her brother used to take her down to the stream and they had a little bridge that went over the stream uh -huh. and he picked her up by the ankles and he would, he would lower her head down in the water and oh, pick her back mean, up. Oh, mean kid. <laughs> but that's, it's, it's the fear that comes up at that time and it instills a behavior. You see, and that's what we're talking about. Oh, so you have to get back to where that all started then. Many, many times you do. Many, oh. many times you do. So we work with people in being able to go back. Well, we have this perfect recording that's going up here in the subconscious all the time. Yeah, like a motion picture theater? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and all we do with hypnosis is since we're going into that internal world, mm -hmm. we tap into the recording, and it's just like if you took your VCR at home and you put it on rewind, and you rewound that tape, mm -hmm. we go back, we find out. But what we do is we link it up to today. You're an adult today. Now you can understand what your little brother, your older brother was doing to oh, you. Oh, yes. So you can put a, picture, a different picture frame around that issue now mm -hmm. and learn that you can walk away from an issue like that. And tell yourself that he can't do that anymore because you're not a little girl anymore. Exactly. You just get a rock and beat him. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what about anxiety? Is that something that you have a lot of call for? We do from time to time. And in today's world, really, you know, it seems so fast. Everything happens so fast. Oh, yeah. You know, if the president says something, it's clear around halfway around the world in about three, three minutes. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's true. So we gather information so fast today, it does. It creates a lot of anxiety for people. Mm -hmm. And really for the, for the most part, and once again, it may go back to a feeling of loss of control because things are happening so fast in our lives. But for the most part, if people can learn to just sit back and take some real good downtime, and that's one thing with hypnosis that's really good for that, is that just a couple of, maybe if you took 30 minutes in hypnosis, real good deep hypnosis, mm -hmm. and what would end up happening it would, might be equivalent to maybe three, four hours sleep. And oh. deep, deep sleep, you see. So your mm -hmm. recuperation and your ability to shed that anxiety happens that way. Uh, so right. a lot of times when I have people who come in for that, if we can find that there's a possible issue going on right there in their lives and we'll deal with that, but I can send them home with a CD that w is our, what we call our ultimate relaxation CD mm -hmm. and then they can go home and that CD will just really put them very deep into hypnosis and at that point in time their body just relaxes, all the muscles relax. Mm -hmm. And years ago when I did massage I would turn around and actually hypnotize people before the massage, mm -hmm. I didn't have to work so hard oh, yes, <laughs> because they relax so right. well. Right, <laughs> deep relaxation. But at that point in time, then we could continue doing the work and uh -huh. their body is so relaxed, well, they're so refreshed. Are you, you know what it's like if you have two, three hours of really deep, deep sleep. Oh, yes. Okay, well, it's, now you can do it in 30 minutes. 
and be in great shape and ready to go. You know, you're ready to take on the world when you feel like that. Oh, yes, you know? has so much more energy. Well, does anxiety have anything to do with... There's so many people who are weight in this country, and there's so many people that have... I don't know where it comes from, but is anxiety part of it? Anxiety is a big part of it. Uh -huh. um, I think there's two, two factors today. Uh -huh. Fast food, <laughs> number oh, one. Oh, yes, most I definitely. Think it's killing us all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. and they... And, and uh, what are we going to do about it? I don't know, because we seem to keep them in business, so y you know what I mean? But on the other side of that, when you're looking at people who have some issues with food, it's what are they using the food for? Comfort food, if you've ever heard of that. Oh, taking place of love. Uh, uh, taking the place <laughs> of love. Um, just, I feel bad today, so... You know, if I get something in my belly, it makes me feel nice and calm. Well, I take that as far back many times, and I teach my students. Think about the baby that cried. What did they always get first? They, oh, my poor, sweet little baby. Yes, and, <laughs> and then with that, they either got the bottle, yes. okay, or the mother nursed them. Right. So anytime yeah. they had a problem, it seemed like, what did they get? They got filled up. It got attention too. Right. Lots of attention. So that's yeah. what ends up happening many times with food is they start filling themselves up oh. with food. So when anxiety comes along and it doesn't feel good, it's like that anxiety starts raising like this. Well, then mm -hmm. they stuff food down on top of it, take it back down again. Oh. If you can imagine a picture like that, oh. you see. So what we do is we want to find out what's causing that anxiety and bring it out and get it and get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are mm -hmm. what we call our causative factor, uh -huh. and then they don't have to be stuffing food all the time. Well, and the, they they find that they they can find other ways of being happy without eating. Exactly, and that's what we do when we when somebody comes in to first talk to us. We we want to find out if let's say it was all taken care of today, and it was what you came in for and you were looking for. It was all done. Where would your life be right now? How would you feel right now? What would you be doing right now if, it was, if this problem was all taken care of? Where would your life be? So we want them to focus on that. Once they focus on that, then they can see, w number one, well, then I can get there. If they can imagine it, then they, they can get there. And all I'm mm -hmm. going to do is help them get there. I see. You see. So we're going to do some work with them, and we're going to start changing some behavior systems and start working with them to do that. Okay. Are you ready to tell us another story? Well, I could tell you the one about the gentleman who, um, we had a gentleman come in one time, and it, and it goes back to even that nervous system again. Oh. We had a gentleman that had been, he, he traveled, uh, and what he had done is he used to paint signs on people's windows for their businesses. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Neat. Really neat guy. Uh-huh. But all he did, he had a little motorhome, he used to travel around, he pulled over in a, one of the stops, and somebody had gotten in when he went in to use the restroom. When he came back out, they hit him, I don't know, I think the number was something like 14 times with a ball-peen hammer in, oh, the, he no. in the head. They threw him out and left him by the side of the road. Well, what ended up happening was that all motor skills were pretty well messed up. I guess. So we did the same kind. thing. We started remapping with him and working with him, and we got him back up and going again. I actually had a student at one time who did some therapy work, and she taught him how to start walking again, and he's off living his life again. Oh, well, that's uh, wonderful. It was great. It was really great. Oh. The driving, when I told you the fear of driving. What's that related to? Well, we had a, we had a young girl come in, and she um, just would not get her driver's license. She'd gotten her permit three times. <laughs> oh, wow. Just would not follow through for the driving. So what we ended up doing was working with her. And um, we found out some trauma that she had been through in the car oh. um, with a, with a father-in-law. And oh. through that, she was just afraid to get in the car and get behind the wheel anymore. That's understandable. So we just worked it out, got rid of it. She drove from here clear across the United States. Well, good for her. Well, how can someone learn how to be professional in this field? You can take classes. I'm going to, going to start teaching here again. Well, good. Um, as a matter of fact, starting Saturday. 
Oh, so anybody right. that's interested in anything like that, they can contact you. You can get them in touch with okay. me. I'll be happy to help them. But you can take classes to become a professional, and in doing so, um, start working in the field, helping people. Mm -hmm. Very rewarding. Oh, I, I know it is. Just to know that you've helped people like you have, that's mm -hmm. wonderful. Well, I wish you success in your new business. Well, I thank you. Are you going to give it a, a name? or? Well, I, I'm going to be worried. It's, I call it Hypnosis Training International. Okay, all right. So that's the name of the school. All right. Well, for those of you that are listening here, I know that you've all benefited from listening to what Reverend James Smith has to tell you. And you can call the number that's given at the end of the show to get your paper and pencil so you can write it down. And please call us the church where angels come and so can you and I want to thank you so much Reverend James for coming to the show thank you for having me and for those persons listening just remember the first spiritual church where angels come and so can you and God bless you and thank you for listening <laughs>